Whether you've been doing keto for a while or you're just getting started today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to talk about 10 things that you absolutely need to do. Let's kick off this journey right, right after, after this. this. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. Every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. And on Thursdays, we live stream every single Thursday at 930 Eastern Standard Time. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So I think that's the last time I'm ever going to do that live stream portion. I was just along for the ride. I'm like, come in when I'm supposed to come in. Well, we've been having the same exact intro for a year now. And I'm, if you're so used to it, it just comes out of your mouth. One, two, three. So when you're trying to add something in there, I don't know about that. Yeah. So welcome to Two Crazy Ketos. It is 2020. It is a new year and a new decade. A new decade. Oh and with gosh. a new year and a new decade, sometimes that brings, at least for us it does, changing up your lifestyle a little bit. Enhancing your lifestyle. Time to get serious about my goals. Start working on our health. So we figured yeah. this is a good time to start talking about different things that you need to do, whether you're just getting started on the keto diet or if you've been doing it for a while and you're trying to maybe get a little bit stricter or, I don't know, fix the things you've been screwing up because of the holidays. Yeah, the holidays hit me like a Mack truck, yo. So now it's time to restart, reboot, get serious again. Yeah, maybe you're like us and you've been doing keto. You stayed keto during the holidays, but you had just one too many keto treats. One too many. Try all of them. I had all the keto treats and I ate all the bacon. So today we're going to talk about 10 things that you absolutely need to do, whether you're just getting started or if you've been doing keto for a while. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with number one, yeah. right? So number one, I was trying to think, should we go backwards or forwards? We'll start off with number one. Number one. Number 10 will be the most important, or that's, it doesn't really matter. Just 10 things. I feel like it, that's how it should be. Right. Okay, so number one. Do your research. Yes. You want to know exactly how do you want to do your keto journey and what do you want to accomplish? What is the time frame? What do you want to work into your life? What do you want to work out of your life? Yeah. Figure out like what kind of keto do you want to do? Do you want to do clean keto? Do you want to do dirty, dirty keto? Do you want to do lazy keto? You definitely don't want to do what I did when I got started, which was no research. I mean, when I got started, I had no clue what I was doing and I paid the price for it. So you want to start researching things like what is the keto flu? Uh, what kind of symptoms am I going to have? How can I fix it? Which we're going to talk about in this video. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to do a stricter form of keto, you want to start researching things like what are the best foods to eat and what are the best foods to avoid? And thankfully, the keto diet's been going on for a long time now. So there is information out there. Unlike when we started, there wasn't quite as much information. There's lots of books like the Keto Answers book. There's Lies My Doctor Told Me by Dr. Barry. Yeah, we'll leave links for those down in the description. There are some great podcasts now from doctors that are well-respected in their field. And there's all kinds of YouTubers like us. So that leads us to number two. Pick a time. And there's never going to be a perfect time to get started. There's always going to be a holiday or some sort of party that you want to go to that's going to try and throw a wrench in your plans. But it's time to do this for you. Now, I have my handy-dandy planner here, which Joe absolutely hates. But I want you to take a look at what's going on in your life. You don't want to start this when you have an important test the next day or you have an important work meeting in the next couple of days because you need to budget some time to have the keto flu and just feel disgusting. I know that that sounds silly, but even though we have some tips for going through the keto flu, you are still going to be detoxing off of sugar and you need to start the keto diet when you have a couple of days to just lay around in bed and do nothing. So that brings us to number four, get your electrolytes in. Like Rachel said, you're going to go through the keto flu. I'm so sorry. And the keto flu, it's not a lot of fun. It's just like it sounds. You're going to have flu-like symptoms. You're going to be nauseous. 
a little irritable, probably be a little sleepy, maybe some cramping, just overall not feeling good. And mm. one of the best ways to handle that is with electrolytes. So what you wanna do is make sure you're taking plenty of magnesium, sodium, and potassium. And some of the things you can do to get that, you can use, first of all, some keto chow electrolyte drops. Mm -hmm. This is a super cheap way to do it. You just add some into your water, your coffee, your tea, whatever you're drinking, and it'll give you everything you need. You could use something like Keto Vitals. It's kind of like a powdered Kool-Aid yeah. or Crystallite or something like that, only it's got lots of electrolytes in there. Every serving has like 500 milligrams of potassium in there. You have Ultima. Same kind of thing. They have a lot of different flavors, including a brand new watermelon flavor. Ooh. Then you have one of our favorites, Zip Fizzes. If you need a quick pick-me-up, if you need that real quick boost, you're just not feeling good, a Zip Fizz are awesome. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them uh, when you go to Sam's this Club, is the flavor, Costco. Fruit Rachel's punch. favorite flavor is Fruit Punch. The Mine is one. actually Grape or oh. Limon. And uh, every one of them is going to give you 900 milligrams of potassium. No. Fruit you punch. have for magnesium, calm. Put a scoop of this in your drink at night. You'll sleep really well. You get all the magnesium. If you're getting those leg cramps while you're sleeping, this will definitely help. And then another great way to just throughout the entire day is adding plenty of sodium. You know, on any other standard American diet, people are always like, don't eat sodium. You need the sodium when it comes to being on the keto diet. Your body's gonna be flushing out sodium because you're getting rid of all those glycogen stores. You need to replace that sodium. So add salt to all your food, and you can even get these blocks like this and just constantly lick on them all day long. So number four is clean out your refrigerator and pantry. You wanna take a look at what's inside and see, are there any things that are not good for a keto lifestyle? Overly processed things like these Pop-Tarts, the popcorn, Chef Boyardee ravioli, the Progresso soup that maybe you were used to eating. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't get rid of everything, maybe you have a spouse or some children that aren't doing keto, no big deal. All you need to do is do what we did. Find one shelf and say that shelf is for non-keto foods. Or pick one cabinet like this one here and say that is only keto stuff. And then when you need something, look in your cabinet but nobody else's. Then you won't be tempted by anything. So number five, ditch all of the unhealthy oils. Go through your cabinets, go through your refrigerator and get rid of everything that contains canola oil, corn oil, vegetable oil. All of these oils, they're horrible for you. Whether or not you're doing keto or you're doing the standard American diet, you don't want to use any of these kinds of oils. They're going to lead to inflammation and that's going to completely undo everything that you're trying to accomplish using the keto lifestyle. Instead of that, you want to get things like coconut oil, avocado oil, and even olive oil. Those are the healthy oils. In addition, go get all of your good fats. Use things like butter, ghee, lard, tallow, duck fat. Those are the kind of oils you wanna use. Now also, you wanna make sure you check your condiments, things like mayonnaise. If the number one ingredient or any of the ingredients is corn oil or vegetable oil, get rid of that stuff. You can buy something like this Chosen Foods 100% avocado oil mayo, or you can use our recipe and make your own. I'll leave a link for it right up here. It only takes about 30 seconds to make. All you gotta do is buy an egg and some avocado oil. Number six is figure out your macros. Now we will leave a link down below to our macro calculator and you definitely wanna use a macro calculator because it's gonna feel really weird eating this much fat. Yeah, so many of us are so used to eating the standard American diet, eating low fat, eating a bunch of protein and a lot of carbohydrates. So it's gonna feel really weird when you're eating 60, 70, 80% fat in your diet. So you wanna use the macro calculator like chronometer or you can even use carb manager. You wanna use that to number one, be able to track how much fat you're taking in because fat is gonna satiate you. But you also wanna just get a, an overall idea of what different foods have in it. Now, when you first get started, we're not gonna really worry about like our calories. And you're gonna look online and you're gonna see some people saying calories are really important and you're gonna see other people that say calories don't mean a thing. And honestly, both camps are right. It comes down to what exactly are you eating? If you're eating just the essential foods that you need, which is protein, fat, and all of your electrolytes, vitamins, and minerals. Notice we're not saying carbs because carbs are not essential. You don't need any carbs. But if you're just eating that stuff, things like your beef, your chicken, your fats, bacon, bacon some cruciferous vegetables, calories won't matter at all. 
where calories are going to matter is when you start incorporating a lot of the junk things, things like cookies and ice cream, eating when you're not supposed to, eating when you're not hungry. Snack. That's when calories are going to matter. But if you're just eating the essentials, when your body tells you it's time to eat, you won't be gaining any weight and you'll start to lose. Now that we've figured out our macros, number seven is actually just worry about the carbs when you get started. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's already hard enough working sugar and bread out of your life. You don't want to have to be thinking about calories calories right now. Yeah, when you first get started, you know, the sugar, you're going to be so focused on I can't have sugar, I can't have bread. Don't worry about that. Just eliminate the carbs. Don't worry about eating too many calories. Don't worry about am I getting too much protein? Don't worry about am I eating enough fat? Just bring your carbs under 20 and you'll be good. Once you really get accustomed to the lifestyle, then we can go back and start focusing on our macros. The other thing is is when you are focusing on your macros, remember this. The carbs, that's an upper limit. You don't have to hit 10, 15, 20 carbs. You can have less, you just can't have more. Yes, yeah, some days I eat 20 carbs and some days I eat two. And that also applies to your fat macros. If you're trying to lose weight on the keto diet, you don't need to always be worrying about hitting that upper fat limit. That's more for people who are in their maintenance mode so they can feel optimal. If you're trying to lose weight, you want to be burning body fat. So if you have like say 20 grams left in your fat macros for the day and you're not hungry, don't bother eating that. What we suggest is keep your carbs under 20, hit your protein and use fat to fill you up. Number eight is keep it simple. And this is one of my favorite ones because while Joe will make really complicated recipes, I like simple things like eggs and bacon and hamburger. Yeah, when you first get started on the keto diet, like don't try to make all the super complicated recipes, even the ones that are on our own website. Right. Those are things for maintenance when you get further along down the line, or even if you start getting bored with things. But when you first get started, simple things like eggs, bacon, ground beef, hamburgers, salmon, that's gonna get you through. Also, make sure you make a bunch of stuff ahead of time. Definitely. Have some hard boiled eggs made, have some hamburgers made. This way, when you start getting that hankering that like, hey, I need to eat something, instead of going to McDonald's, you can grab something out of your fridge. Now, number nine kind of ties back into number six. We were talking about calories and macros and it's don't snack. And there's really two aspects to this. Yeah, the first aspect is don't eat anything in between meals. Now, if you're like I was and you were used to eating five, six, seven times a day, cut back to just three meals a day. Then try to cut back to two times and then maybe even one time. That's called intermittent fasting. Because the bottom line is, every time you eat, you spike insulin. That's including if you're eating fat, protein, or carbohydrates. They all spike insulin and you can't lose weight in the presence of insulin. The other part of don't snack is avoid all of the keto treats and snacks. There are a lot of delicious, keto cookies and candies and ice creams, all kinds of things out there that are gonna help you out later on, but when you're starting out, you wanna sort of avoid them. Yeah, when you first get started, stick to whole foods. Now, if you really need something like to just fill that little bit of a sweet craving that you have, what you wanna do is have a simple fat bomb, something like our cookie dough recipe, which I will leave a link for down below. The keto treats are great for sustainability later on, but right now you wanna get away from all your old habits. And if you start right off the bat with eating a bunch of cookies and cakes and things like that, it's gonna make it very easy to go back to your old lifestyle. And number 10 is find some support. I'm actually blessed to have Rachel in my life so we can support each other and encourage each other as we go along. But if you don't have that, don't worry about that. Go online, there are plenty of Facebook support groups. In fact, you have our group, Two Crazy Keto's Family. It's linked down below, but if you go in that group, there are over a thousand people in there who are there to encourage you every day, to share recipes, share deals, just lift you up on a daily basis. We absolutely love you and we want the opportunity to cheer you on in your keto journey. Yeah, there's lots of websites, there's YouTube channels, there's like I said, Facebook support groups, Instagram, plenty of people out there to support you. So if you don't have anybody at home, make sure you turn to online because there's lots of people that'll go along this journey with you. And you are not alone. So there you are, 10 tips to help you get started on keto, but there's lots more. Yeah, there's a lot of other tips that we can give you, but if you follow those 10, it'll definitely make either getting started on keto or living a little bit stricter keto lifestyle a lot easier. Now I do want to say, just so that everybody knows, we are not doctors. No way. We're not health professional. These are just things that we have found that help make our journey easier and we're just trying to pass them along to you guys. Now if there's anything else, please let us know down in the comments. Maybe there's some things that we missed that you would like to 
suggest to other people who are just getting started. That's a great idea. Now, please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.